What's going on, everybody? Gentleman94 here, back with another episode here on Ben Bills. This is day number six here on the P36A, and this is looking pretty decent. We've done a lot of work here on the seams between the fuselage and wing joints. We've fared these in here on the 50 and 30 cal nose guns, and we've been working tirelessly, polishing out different areas, fixing up panel lines. We do have a bit of a step right back here, but we've reduced that severely by sanding and jeweler files. This whole section right in here has been reworked, and it looks pretty decent. Good from the front, good from the top, good from the side. We are looking good. So here's the plan for today, though. I wanted to go ahead and work on all the little fidgety parts that we had, like the propeller, the spinner, the wheels, the landing gears, you know, everything that we need to put onto this aircraft, I want to go ahead and work on today because next episode, I plan on painting this sucker. I want to get some nice metal finish. I want to get everything kind of squared away. But today, like I said, we're just going to work on the small parts. So first off, let's look at the propeller. Now we have two different choices for spinners. The first spinner is more of an aerodynamic view. The second one is one we want. This one here, this is a stepped spinner. We don't want the aerodynamic one because that's for the Mohawk and the export versions of the P-36, and we're not building those, we're building the A. We're gonna use the stepped front spinner. We're gonna cut that out of the sprue, get that cleaned up. We're also going to have to clean up the propeller because, yeah, there's a lot of little seam lines, there's some different areas that uh, just need some work. So we're gonna tackle that now. And I gotta tell you, you know, some of these kit parts have just been really difficult to clean up and get kind of squared away. And we're going to use our X-Acto knife, and we're just going to start kind of slicing off all the little bits and pieces that need to go. We're also going to use our flush cuts to cut off the remaining sprue from the attachment points there. And we're also going to have to use some jeweler files to go ahead and, you know, smooth out and sand down some of the rougher seam marks. So this should work just fine. Get it on in there. This is a curved jeweler file, so that should help to kind of give it a nice curved view. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you so you can hopefully see what I'm talking about with these weird seams. Okay, so here we go. Now you can hopefully see on camera that there is a line that runs all the way around right down the middle of this entire propeller hub. Let me show you right here. You got a little bit of a line there, and on the other side over here, it's way more pronounced. There you go. Hopefully you can see that line. It runs the length of the propeller right through the hub and up the blades. So we're going to have to take our hobby knife and just kind of dig out some of these areas, just slice off the raised area, and hopefully that should work just fine. Slice it down here on the side and use our end of our blade, just kind of scrape along. On top of that, we're going to do that on each of the blades. So we're going to work on that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we have our propeller more or less ready to go. And let me go ahead and give it a little test fit here and we'll show you what's going on. So that actually fits right in there and looks pretty decent. So now we're going to have to go ahead and glue it. Before we do that, though, let me talk a little bit about the real world version. So you can see here it's got silver gray propeller on the outside, and on the inside we have a flat black area. This is um, not represented in the kit instructions. We actually are called out for all flat black, and that's not correct. So it just goes to show you that if you're going to build a model, it's a good idea to have that reference material there handy for you because you know you never know when the instruction manual is going to tell you wrong information. So keep that in mind. We are going to go ahead and glue this together now. So let's get some extra thin cement here. And we're just going to give it a little bit of a dot of glue on the inside. And the capillary effect should take hold and kind of clean this up a bit there. And we're going to also put a little bit of the glue on the outside and also the sections between the blades because the extra thin cement has a wonderful feature and it will actually help to smooth things out. You're gonna to have to sand it afterwards, but it will really kind of take those rough high points and kind of round them out. So that's kind of a nice finishing touch you can do with that extra thin cement. So put some pressure on this, get this all squared away. Yeah, it looks good. So let's go ahead and put it off to dry and let's get going on a different side of the aircraft. So here we go. I was noticing we have a panel line that's missing right across the top of the cowl. And I want to go ahead and rescribe that with my pin vise. 
But to do that, we're going to have to go ahead and create some form of guide, like a template in a way. Now you can use regular old Tamiya tape, and you could just take a section and just roll it right over the top and, you know, use that as a template. I don't want to do that. There's actually a better choice. We can use something a little different, which is this right here. This is Dymo tape, and it's for, you know, old school label makers. It works really well because it's thick. It's um, also quite flexible because it's actually tape. It will adhere to your surface, won't leave any marks, and you can use this as a wonderful guide when you're rescribing panel lines. But we're going to use blue tape instead because I don't know if they even make this Dymo tape, and I don't want to use up the last little bit I have on this little section. So we're going to take a little section of tape, and we're just going to stick it down there to the cowling. And let's get one more little strip of tape here. There we are. And just place that down. Perfect. Now we could go a third or a fourth one, but I think this would be sufficient. Let's just straighten it out just a little bit there, make sure it's all lined up. And that should, yeah, that should work. So let's go ahead and grab our pin vise. Now we're going to use a pin vise, and I've got this poker thing chucked in the end of my pin vise. We're going to use that as a scraper and just kind of scrape down into the plastic. It's tapered, so it's going to give us a nice V shape to our panel line, and it should match the existing panel line quite nicely. And we're just going to go from either end and just scrape down into the plastic. Not going to go too deep, though. We don't want to gouge it. We just want to have an impression of a panel line that we unfortunately sanded away when we were working on kind of fairing in all the parts and pieces. Take the tape away, and you can see it right there. So now, let's move on. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife here, and I'm just going to use the end of the blade like I did for the propeller, and I'm just going to scrape across the panel line. And that's going to take away some of those raised ridges that we created by scribing. Now that's not enough though, we need to take some sandpaper to it. So a little bit of sandpaper there to just kind of round out the edges, and when we're satisfied, a little bit of Tamiya, extra thin cement right along that panel line, and that should help to kind of blend everything together and kind of melt it down and soften the harshness of the lines. I think that's going to do it for that. We'll set it aside and let it dry, and it should be good to go within, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And then we should be able to give a good idea about what it looks like and if we need to do more to it. So next I wanted to put another one of these little fidgety bits on here, and I wanted to put the, I guess you would call them exhaust shrouds, to go ahead and cover up the exhaust pipes coming out of the engine. And I have my reference materials, and hopefully this should give us a good idea of where to place them. They have these weird indents cut into the bottom of the cowling, but I don't want to trust those. I don't know how they fit. So we should be able to use the references and figure out this, this little shroud should go somewhere right about there sticking out a little bit past the edge of the cowling and angled slightly outward, very, very slightly. So I'm going to take my part here, drop one little drop of extra thin cement right there along that inner side, and that should be enough to stick it there. Now I can just go ahead and position, kind of move it around, get it placed where I want it, and then I can come back and drop a little bit more to me extra thin cement kind of around the outside and hit some of the inside as well. So that looks pretty good. I just want a minor adjustment. Just got to get this perfect and a little bit of pressure. We're good to go. Also, we can just take a little bit of this cement and actually put some on the outside and the inside as well because we don't have the pipes installed yet. So we can hit this from all angles and really make sure this is secure. Because again, this is going to be natural metal along with the rest of the aircraft and we don't want it to move or break off. or you know, We want to make sure it's nice and sturdy. So looking good. All right, let's get the second one on. We'll be right back. Okay, both of these shrouds are on, and they're looking decent. I have them positioned more or less where I need them to be, and yeah, I, I like it. I might have to tweak this one just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, maybe this one a little bit too. Okay, so we should fix this one hole up top here on the fuselage. I've been meaning to fix this for a while now, so we should do this now. What I'm going to do, though, is, you know, inevitably when you put on these sort of like aerials, you end up breaking one of them off if you put it on too quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purposely break off the aerial. And I'm going to glue this mast right here into the hole. Uh, let's just test fit this real quick. Just like that. Yep, so a little plastic welder on that should keep this thing more or less melted up so we can then sand it later on. So that should be decent. So let's get going. All right, a little bit of plastic welder around there. We're good with that. So let's let that kind of soak in. We're just going to cut off the tip of that because we don't need the rest of that. And that little stub right there, that's all that we need. 
to go ahead and really make sure that that seals up that hole. We're going to give it some pressure and we're just going to let it dry. That's it. <laughs> I mean, this is the only time I'd actually want to break off an aerial. All right, moving on, let us go ahead and work on the wheels. Now, I wanted to clean up some of these parts and pieces. So we're going to clean up the seam line that goes all the way around the wheel, much like the propeller. These are not well molded. Um, you could go out and get a set of resin wheels for this, and that might work just as well. It would look better, that's for sure, but I don't want to really do that for this kit. So we're just going to use our jeweler file, scrape off some of this um, you know, seam line, take some sandpaper to it, really clean them up, and get them ready for paint, because we have to paint the center of these things silver. So let's get going. All right, so I have all the wheels cleaned up and they're taped down to the inside of the box with some blue tape. I have our different sections here. We're gonna paint all of this silver and we're gonna use our airbrush here, our Iwata HPC, and we're going to use some Tamiya Chrome Silver. Okay, so we've got everything stuck down. We're just gonna paint all these parts in just nice even strokes and this should be fine. You gotta be careful with this Tamiya paint though because sometimes it will clog because it's a little flecks of metal in it or a little flex of something in it. So watch out for that when you're painting. All right, so everything is painted. We have the aircraft here. We need to paint the inside of the wheel wells as well, but we're not doing that quite yet. We'll do that later. I think right now, while that paint is drying, um, I want to inspect some of my glue here, make sure everything's looking good, and also clean up this little nub here at the top. So let's put this aside and get out our flesh cuts. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and just cut this off. Just with our flesh cuts, just give it a snip. Should pop it clean off. Perfect. Now we're going to grab our jeweler file. We're going to come back through here and we're just going to sand this down. And that should be enough to fare this in and make this look smooth. This is one of the only times I'll recommend breaking off your aerial. <laughs> if you want to go ahead and seal up a hole, that's a good way to do it. And yeah, this is going to be fine. We're going to you know, file this down and then we're going to take some sandpaper to it. But before we do that, I'm going to use the same technique as I've used before on the panel lines and also, you know, on certain sections. I'm going to take a little bit of the Tamiya and I'm just going to drop it right there, right on top of where that was. And that should help to even further kind of soften it and blend it into the rest of the fuselage. And I think that's looking pretty decent. So we're going to let that dry and we'll be back and, you know, work on the next section. But yeah, this is looking great. I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. All right, so one of the last things I want to do today is I want to go ahead and dip all the clear parts into future floor polish. And I've been looking at these, and they're decent. We need to make sure we select the correct windscreen. And we're just going to cut these things out and get them ready for future. And the nice thing about future is it makes clear parts a lot more transparent. So this is a good idea to do. So we're going to cut out the individual parts. There's the center section. And let's get the windscreen as well. There we are. Remember, get the right windscreen. So that's, uh, that's a good idea. And we're gonna take the back clear inserts as well. Now remember, I might've mentioned this before, but remember that the P36, actually the early P36s had frameless glass um, front canopy sections. So this unfortunately has a little bit of frames built into it, but it should be fine. Center section looks good. I don't have any problem with that. So let's go ahead and get our future out. So we're just gonna drop some future into this, this little uh, mixing cup we have here. Make sure to put enough though so you can cover the entire clear part with one dip. You don't have to take it in multiple times at different angles. And let's also get a paper towel. Very important to have a paper towel to dry your parts. And dip them in all the way to the bottom, covering the entire section. Pull it out, give it a few shakes. And then we're going to just basically touch that against the paper towel. That should take and wick off the extra, and we're done. You know, that's it. You don't have to, like, rub it down or dry it. Just soak up the last little bit just by touching it against the paper towel, and that should be good. Set it aside. Let it dry. So let's get to the next part. All right, doing the center section now. We're going to go in at an angle so we don't trap any air bubbles. Kind of scoop and pull out. Let's do it one more time. There you go. Perfect. Now we're going to place it again against the paper towel. That should suck the rest of the moisture down into the paper towel and leave everything, you know, nice and smooth. Again, let's get the next section. That's the front windscreen. And clamp it in. And again, we're going in, kind of turn, pull it out. Looking good. Drop it onto the paper towel. And we are good. That should dry and we should be good to go. 
So that's not too hard, guys. The rest of this we can pour back into the bottle because, well, buy one bottle, you can use it a long time. And that's it, guys. That's all I'm doing for today. Everything is ready to go. We've got the parts painted. We've got this ready to go. We've got it mostly polished. Oop. And we've got the canopies dropped in the future. So we are good. We're going to let this dry. We're going to come back next time, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing painted. So wish me luck, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.